<laughs> All right, we are live, and this is an exciting, exciting day. So, um, what are we doing here? Welcome. Uh, this is the new Apple Silicon M1 Pro, M1 Max, uh, MacBook Pro uh, for musician series. Uh, you know, I'm I'm really I'm aiming to answer the question. Is now a good time to upgrade? I've got from my doorstep today an unboxing to do in this first part video. And then um, this is going to be kind of a multi-part series where my goal is to kind of actually open up the DAW, open up um, you know, Ableton, Logic, uh, actually get into do my audio interfaces work from a hardware standpoint and just see how everything runs on the new Apple uh, MacBook Pros with Apple Silicon in them. Um, so, you know, these are hitting doorsteps today. It's really exciting. And so this is going to be sort of an unboxing and first look in this first video. Um, I have to give you a couple warnings. One, I'm not a professional musician. I am definitely a hobbyist. I am a guitarist. I'm a dad, always looking for 15 minutes a day or so to be able to play the guitar, record some guitar, um, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, this is definitely, uh, you know, a passion project. It's not, I, I can't speak for people in a professional uh, music studio setting. So, um, you know, use my findings and my input uh, with a grain of salt if you have to do this stuff professionally. But for someone who's got some cash to spend and is trying to upgrade their home studio and is a, you know, a hobbyist, um, you know, this is totally for you. I, you know, I, I use some universal audio gear. Um, I'm using Ableton Live. I use Logic. Uh, I use Final Cut Pro and um, Premiere Pro to do some video editing. So I'm going to try to take a look at um, all that stuff uh, as it relates to the new Apple MacBook Pro running the M1 Max chip and Rosetta 2 and all of that. So, um, you know, I'll also kind of give my general impressions in terms of, you know, form factor, that kind of stuff as we go through the unboxing. And, you know, at the end of this, I'm kind of hoping I can give some answers on like whether now is a good time to make the switch. I know that some of us have been waiting like five years or so to upgrade uh, our MacBook Pros, um, or maybe, or at least they're at least five, six years old at this point. And so, you know, the question becomes, you know, do I upgrade? I was on the fence, like, do I buy an iMac with an Intel chip and just max it out? And how long will that last for? And so I don't think anyone knows how long this timeline of Apple updating and, you know, developers getting their hardware and software on board to the new native silicon chips and whether or not everyone will even fully do that. You know, I've heard great things about Rosetta 2 and maybe they'll find that they don't have to. But um you know, that's that's kind of what I'm aiming to to answer in this whole series. So uh, please make, uh, you know, uh, subscribe, hit the like button, uh, hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date on the next videos that come in the series. My hope is to get them out in the next week or so. Um, but uh, yeah, follow Dad Time Jam Time, subscribe to Dad Time Jam Time, and I'll, I'll keep you coming. So um, like I said, this is all in context of the fact that for you know, music production, a lot of software and hardware isn't necessarily natively compatible with this new uh, Apple silicon chip. And you might be asking yourself, what does he mean by that? And, you know, these are ancestors of, you know, 15 years of MacBook Pros, but they're not necessarily direct ancestors. And the reason for that is because they don't use an Intel chip and they're not using like x86 architecture. And so you, that makes a big paradigm shift in, in the land of Apple. Uh, you know, back in the mid-2000s, like 2005, 2006, whenever Apple started using Intel chips, it brought so many people onto Macs. All of a sudden, you could run Windows on it through boot camp. And, um, you know, software developer, it became easier, I think, to kind of get some, some software onto it. You even saw games like StarCraft II and stuff all of a sudden uh, you know, running on Macs and, you know, other developers jumping on board. And that was really exciting, I think, for being a Mac user at that time. Um, but, you know, I guess there are all these shortcomings with x86 architecture and Intel chips. And, you know, Apple, when they started making chips for the iPhone and iPad, their A-series chips, they bought an actual chip factory and 
Now they can be like vertically integrated and make their own chips. I know that there's this thing called like SOC or like system on a chip or something like that, which is um, basically it's the, it's the CPU, it's the memory, it's the GPU, um, it's like neural processing, all on a single chip. It's all integrated. And it means that things run super fast. They can share memory. The, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know the technical terms fully, uh, but the, you know, the, the, uh, the interfaces between memory and CPU are like, can be widened and more information can be pushed, you know, per second or millisecond or whatever. And so by, by, by all regards, I hear that this is just meant to be a faster architecture that should blow everything out of the water when you have a CPU and RAM and GPU all sitting in different areas on a motherboard and having to like interface with each other in a different way. So um, anyway, that's my that's my layman term review of the last 15 years of Apple and this switch to the new paradigm and why this is such a big deal. And it's really because this hypothetically should be so fast it melts my face off. But with the caveat that nothing to support it doesn't no, no software supports it and if no software actually supports it then what the heck like how fast can things run on it that, so there's a software layer called rosetta 2 that's translating stuff written for intel max to run on this chip and the question is how fast is that does it work for video production does it work for audio production do you know crazy audio plugins that are doing stuff at a really low level on the system cause Rosetta to crash and pan kernel panics and things to break down. Or am I going to, am I going to be in the middle of a session on, uh, on in Ableton or in logic and lose a bunch of stuff of a long recording that I'm doing in a video because the system crashes because it's running through Rosetta. You know, these are all the questions that I have running through my mind that make me wonder if now's a good time to upgrade or not. And so, you know, these are my big questions. And then we will get to the unboxing. Um, will my audio interfaces work with it? So will my actual hardware audio interfaces work with it? I have a universal audio um, uh, Apollo single or whatever arrow is what it used to be called. Um, the HX, uh, uh, the line six HX stomp line um, has an audio interface or reads as an audio interface as well. I have a quad cortex, which is another uh, guitar modeling slash effects unit that you can plug right in through USB into a computer. And hypothetically, it, you know, all that should be picked up by Ableton or Logic. And you should see those interfaces as inputs you Can plug my guitar or microphones into that stuff and capture uh, capture audio and, and record it. Um, I also have this thing called the Fender Mustang Micro, which is a little headphone amp that's super sweet. That also is an audio interface with USB. And so I'm I'm excited to see can I plug all that stuff into my my uh, this new MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip in it and get audio recording without an issue. And then for things like the Universal Audio, where it's more than just an audio interface. It's also like an audio console. They have a thing called Luna. And they also just in general have their console software where you can run plugins in real time, natively kind of on the device um, using its, its DSP, its digital processing power built into the unit um, and color the tone that you're bringing in uh, in real time with like almost no latency. And is that going to work? Is it going to crash? I have no idea. I don't even know what version of the operating system this is running. Like I know there was Big Sur and then I think Monterey was after it. So I think these these new M1 Pros or M1 Max Mac Pros are shipping with Monterey. Um, so I don't even know if, you know, Universal Audio and Ableton are even supporting the latest Mac operating system on top of it being a brand new chip. So, you know, we're going to find find some of this stuff out and hopefully uh, Apple's 14 day or so return policy is, <laughs> is upheld because uh, I might be, uh, might be screwed. So um, anyway, you know, so, so that will my audio interfaces work? Um, how do DAWs like Ableton and Logic respond, especially running on Rosetta? Um, and then put it when you, you know, want to make edit. I don't do much editing um, or mixing. It's really like bring in some stems, maybe a backing track, 
uh, try to make my own backing tracks, that kind of stuff. Nothing too intense, maybe a couple plugins. So like, how does that work? What is the plugin environment even like? Um, you know, taking a random sample of plugins that I have and running them, do they work? Do I get crashes? Does that cause issues? I was using a plugin yesterday in Premiere Pro to just saturate some of the audio and it crashed. And that was on an Intel Mac. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but I'm excited to find out. Um, and finally, like, how does it, um, what is this like making some like video content too? I'm really interested in the HD camera that's in this, um, just for simple live, live streams, things like that. How does that look? Can I get to like a faster video input? Um, which is another really big question I have. Um, you know, also, like I said, let's let, I can't wait to get this open. I'm going to look at the form factor. Um, and I'm going to see how all this maybe does even while sort of doing all that stuff I've been talking about on the go. So take the universal audio arrow, take this, take an acoustic guitar, take an electric guitar and go record out in a field somewhere. And how does, how does Rosetta 2 do running on battery life? Um, I, you know, I can't wait to kind of get, get into all of that. Those they will be coming in subsequent videos today. And right now I'm just doing the unboxing, but, um, I think, you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping that this becomes a, uh, a viable option because I'm, I'm ready for an upgrade. Um, all right. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, in this first video, like I said, I'm going to unbox it. Uh, I can't wait to see like it's form factor, how things look. I'm going to get, uh, get the thing booted up, take a look at the screen. I hear the screen's beautiful. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's start getting some software uploaded on it. Probably can't like end the stream at that point and then, um, get into the, uh, next videos after that. So let's see, you know, one of the things I wanted to do, there's no one in my live stream, which I'm not surprised because I don't have any subscribers or anything. Um, what I wanted to do was see if there was a way, I don't see it, um, to test my audio and make sure my audio is actually coming through. It looks like it might be a little bit quiet. That might be a setting on the camera or not. I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, um, get to that later. So for now, without further ado, let's unbox this uh, Apple uh, MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. So frustration-free packaging. Here we go. It has a little tab on it. Pull, pull, pull. I'm not frustrated at all. Um, and then it opens up like this. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Hi there. Okay. And that's all that's in the box from Apple, uh, from shipping it. Uh, I think, yep, yeah, that's all that's in it. Now we have this. So this is a MacBook Pro. This is the 14.2 inch. This is the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, the 64 gig um, of RAM, and the one terabyte hard drive with the US keyboard. So it's the it's the uh, the Max, um, the M1 Max, and it's probably way overkill for what I need. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use 64 gigs of RAM. It's insane, but we'll see what happens. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this tab. Oh, oh my God. This is so exciting. Get this plastic off of it. It's, it's heavy. I mean, I don't know everything that's in this box, but it's definitely, it's definitely not the lightest uh, feeling box. feels solid, but not light. So now I'm just going to kind of pull that up. Box is beautiful. Man, their packaging is always so good though. Okay, there we go. Pull up this tab. Oh, here it is. Oh man. Okay, whoa. Okay, so even just feeling it, that sharper edge bezel on the top, it's not quite as rounded as on the bottom. It already feels different. It feels different. It almost feels kind of Lenovo-y or something like, like a ThinkPad, but like scaled down to a much smaller form factor um, still. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Oh, whoa. This feels like 
super retro in throwback. I don't know if it's going to pick up because of my eyeballs. Let me do that. What does that look like to you? Can you tell? To me, that looks like like the, the 2015 or 2013 or whatever MacBooks. Um, gosh, where is that camera? This is layer. Okay, anyway, it, I'm having some auto zoom issues with Canon. I thought maybe if I took my eyes out of the picture, it would pick it up. Um, okay, so sorry, Canon. You suck. Um, boom. But yeah, it, it, it has that sort of like old school 2013, the first retina display MacBook Pro feeling to it almost. It feels so weird not having it be like a pill shape, but having it be more like a, um, like it's, it's more square. It's more, it's more sharp on the edges on the top. Oh, wow. We've got an engraved uh, MacBook Pro on the bottom of the, on the bottom of the device. Um, <laughs> yes. SD slot card. Uh, that's pretty amazing. USB-C, uh, HDMI, no dongles. No fucking dongles. Um, USB-C over here. Um, and then the MagSafe adapter. This is so exciting. I guess I still need some USB-C to USB-2 dongles or USB-B uh, or A or whatever it is. But, um, but yeah. And, you know, overall, it feels really solid. It feels... I think this is the first time I've ever held a new Apple device and thought it feels a little bit bigger. I don't know if it's actually bigger or not, but it feels a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, you know, that's, that's something. It's, it, that's definitely a departure from the Steve Jobs Apple always smaller always more sleek, always a little bit more powerful uh, kind of approach. But um, but yeah, it feels solid. It feels like a really solid, really solid um, piece of equipment. I'm going to set this down for a second and hopefully not have it slide right off my desk. And let's just take a quick visit to the box and see what else is in here. So we have um, the Design by Apple in California booklet that always kind of comes with things. Got probably some stickers in it, some FCC, uh, FCC uh, regulation stuff. What else is in there? It feels, feels like there's a lot in here, but nothing is coming out. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Quick start guide, two pages. I love it. It's so simple. Um, what else is it? What is that? This is not easy to get open. I don't want to rip anything in case I have to take it back. So this might just stay the way that it is. It it, it looks like there's some stickers in there or something, like the, the traditional Apple sticker. Yeah, so, oh, black. That's new. Usually they were white. In the olden days, and then it feels like there's something really hard in here. I don't know if that's a packaging thing or what. What it, that might literally be a packaging thing just to give it some weight. I'm going to have to rip that open later if I decide to keep this and see if there's something actually in there or not. Um, I'd be surprised. I don't know what it would be. It's not like there's a CD or anything, um, but that's kind of what it feels like. Okay, and so now remaining in the box, we have the uh, 90, I think this is a 96-watt power adapter for the uh, M1 Max, and then... Lo and behold, the return, the prodigal son returns. We have, how do I get this open? Okay, so you just pull the tabs, pull the tabs, pull the tabs, all the tabs. And we have liftoff. This is the USB-C to MagSafe adapter. Oh, it's a nice long cord. It's longer, it feels longer than the USB-C cables that the, uh, the old MacBooks were shipping with. And so it's still USB-C on one side and that plugs right into the port the way the old ones did. And then, boom, you have MagSafe on this side. Oh God, oh God. 
who wants to see this? All right, Canon, you're going to mess this up, but watch this. Wow. That is, that's a thing I haven't felt in a long time, and I have really missed it. I have really missed the MagSafe adapter. You know how many times I'm sitting on my lap with those USB ports, uh, USB-C chargers, and they get torque like tweaked or bent. Um, this is this is a return to the good old days that uh, I will happily embrace. Um, not some kind of weird. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Keep my mouth shut. Okay, so shall we open it up? Okay. What? It knows I opened it and it automatically turned on. Okay, and it came with a, a screen protector from the keyboard, a little tissue, and then it, I opened it up and it booted up. And we could probably do the. Ooh, that looks pretty. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't. I, this isn't going to do this screen justice because of reflections and all that kind of stuff. But this is by far, this is, this is an amazing screen. Holy crap. I don't, I don't even, I don't even know. It's, it's, it, if you can remember way back to like the iPhone 3G. To use English as the main language. Press the return key. Oh my God. And there's no touch bar. Goodbye touch bar. Okay, if you can remember back to the iPhone 3G, back all the way to before there was a retina screen for the first time, and then transitioning to retina, and how like, it was like, oh my god, that's crystal clear. This feels like that, but like, even more. I feel like that on steroids. Um, even like, the radius corners of the window that I'm looking at, feels so smooth and this is like a system dialogue before i'm even fully booted up into that into the operating system so uh that's pretty amazing so here we go i'm gonna choose english go forward trackpad feels nice responsive a little bit wider than usual uh oh sweet i don't know if you can see this it's got a touch uh it's got the i think that's a can you i don't know if you can tell but that key right there is a little bit recessed, and I think that that's a uh, biometric fingerprint touch. Um, what do they call it? Like face ID, whatever. In the screen reader called voiceover. Um, okay, and then not now for any of that accessibility stuff. And here we go. I mean, this is it. The screen is beautiful. All of it is beautiful. How many hours does it say my battery is going to give me? It uh, won't let me click on that yet. Okay. Um, Shoot, now it's trying to make me connect to my wifey's. Um, let's see if I can do that right now. The keyboard feels really good. Like, way better. Way better than like the butterfly keyboard on the uh, previous version. I can't wait to start typing on this. I can't type on it right now because I'm putting my password in. But um, uh, no migration assistant, please. I'm going to set up Apple ID later. I'll skip this and I'll hit agree. And I hit agree. Okay. Ooh, it gave me some drums by default. Let's go. I got to change that to my, uh, to my other uh, things. I gotta put my guitar back on there. This has been my, <laughs> it's been my Apple uh, user image for my accounts for the last 15 years, I think, <laughs> since I since I got my MacBook, the white ones, the old cool white ones. Um, and yeah, I gotta get my guitar in there, hit save. Oh my goodness. Okay, here it is. What is it like to type on it? Sorry that you can't see it because, let me, 
Don't lean back. Do a little lean back. You at least get that logo. Okay. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this keyboard is amazing. It, it feels really fast and responsive, but, like, it almost looks, no, it's not, never mind. So I say it almost looks sealed, kind of like the iPad keyboard, but it's not. You can see light coming from underneath. I used to get so much stuff stuck in, or I still get so much stuff stuck in that butterfly keyboard. I, I wonder, butterfly switch of the old ones, I wonder if this will have that same problem or not. Um, okay, so um, let me get this in here. I'm just typing in that hit continue okay here we go let's take a look hopefully there's nothing sensitive oh my gosh all i want to do is see how much battery life it's telling me i have and i won't let me it's creating my account so that's taking a little bit of time a little bit of time we're looking at probably over 10 seconds now enable location services fine why not Share Mac analytics with Apple. Sure. Share crash data. Um, that's fine. Um, screen time. I'll set that up later. Okay. Siri. Oh my gosh. I'm going to enable Ask Siri later. Okay. <laughs> I guess this isn't the most exciting live stream in the world. Um, touch ID. Yeah. So it is touch ID. I'm going to set that up later. Uh, I'm going to set up Touch ID later. We're going to go a dark theme for Shivj. And here we are. We are in it. This is Monterey. Oh, look at that nice, flat, like exciting little valley in like Monterey or something is what that feels like or looks like. Um, okay, cool. 90%. Oh, it doesn't tell me how much. What if I hit all option? Nope. It doesn't tell me hours. Okay, battery preference. Last charge, 91%. Okay, darn it. I was hoping it would give me like a number of hours remaining. Um, it doesn't. That's okay. So there we are. I mean, wow. We are you're in a brand new world, brand new paradigm. Let's just, I'm just going to spam click things open and see how long it takes to open. Five, six, seven. Eight, eight seconds, one, no, that was really fast. One, two, okay, and that's pretty fast. One, two, okay, pretty darn fast. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So, I mean, it's, okay. <laughs> it's, this is not a scientific test at all, but I mean, it seems like things are really pretty responsive Photos opened up quickly. There's nothing in it. There's no library or anything yet. One, two. I mean, one, two, three, four. Wow, that was pretty quick for Apple TV in the back. Yeah, I mean, it feels snappy. It feels responsive. Um, it's been a great unboxing experience. Like I said, next up, I am going to uh, get Ableton Live 11 installed. I'm going to get Logic installed and up and running. I'm um, going to get some universe, universal audio software installed um, and check out some audio interfaces and, you know, all of that. And we'll see how it goes. So thanks so much for watching. If you did watch, um, it's, you know, the recap on this video for anyone who just joined is it feels kind of retro. It feels a little bit like the 2013 sort of first retina screen models of the Mac. You know, it's got for anyone who cares where are you this is what you're all waiting for right it's got this magsafe adapter that's back it's got an sd card slot that i can put things in which is nice it's got hdmi out which i don't care about uh it's got a headphone jack suck on that iphone um yeah i mean but it, but it feels a little heavy feels a little thick feels a little tall the edges are more squared off. It doesn't quite feel as like pilly or encapsulated. And it really is giving me that like 2013, 2010 Apple MacBook Pro vibe, um, which, hey, if it wasn't broke, 
Don't fix it. Don't take all its ports away and make you buy a hundred thousand dongles. Um, who knows? Anyway, so thanks so much for watching. And uh, if I haven't said it already, if you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell, my goal is to have Ableton and Universal Audio up and uh, and uh, Logic up and running on this in the next day, and to start stress testing it, not in any sort of scientific way, um, but at least with. Uh, uh, some some audio tracks, different random plugins. See if this thing crashes. See if I can actually get music guitar sounds into it through you know a Universal Audio Arrow um, and you know Push Two and things like that. So there we go. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Dad time, jam time, and whatever you do, just find 15 minutes a day to just jam. Make time for jam um, because you know it's the things that bring us love and joy and passion in our lives that'll keep us healthy and sane. So cheers. Thanks for watching.